The concentration of the solutions can also be reported as percentage and parts per million. We're going to study both of them. Let's begin with percentage. As the name says, percentage means parts in every hundred parts. So it means there are the parts of the solute present in 100 parts of the solution. It is important to notice that the base in the percentage, in the percentage is 100 parts. It means if we have in a solution two parts of the solute, the rest of the hundred will be of the solvent. In this case, 98 parts of the solvent, which can be translated as two parts is translated into 2% of solute and 98 parts as 98% of the solvent. The addition of the solute and the solvent, of course, will give 100%. These 100 parts are the total. It means the solution, the addition of solute and solvent, will be equal to the 100%. Let's do the first example together. A solution was prepared with 160 milliliters of water and 5 milliliters of fructose. Determine the percentage of fructose. Let's analyze the problem together. First of all, we need to know that this solution has been prepared with this amount of water and this amount of fructose. As you can read, this one is the solvent and the other one is the solute. It means that in order to get the 100%, we need to add some the both numbers, I mean. So it will be 160 milliliters of the solvent plus 5 milliliters of the solute will give 165 milliliters. Pay attention with this. We need to be sure that all the units we are using for the number cross proportion are the same. In this example, we have one quantity in volume, which are these milliliters, and the other one is also in volume, and it's also in milliliters. We don't need to convert any of these numbers. We are just adding the, the number of milliliters of water with the number of milliliters of the solute. It means that 165 milliliters correspond to 100%. Why? Because this addition makes the complete solution. And the question is, how many fructose are there? What is the percentage? I don't know the percentage of fructose, but I do know that there are five milliliters. Remember, we are always saying that these units, the same units, have to be in the same column. So milliliters with milliliters are and percentage with the final percentage we are looking for. Doing this conversion, this operation, we will get that X corresponds to 3.03% of sucrose. Let's do the next example. Maple syrup has a concentration of sucrose of 35%. What is the mass of sucrose? 
contained in a 710 grams bottle. Let's analyze the problem again. That's what you have to do before beginning to do calculations. Maple syrup has a concentration of this percentage of sugar. And it has, and the, the complete bottle has 710 grams. Look that in this case, we don't have to add the solvent and the solute because it's already done in this number. The maple syrup, it's the whole solution. The second thing we have to analyze is that we have the corresponding units. It means that in 710 grams of this syrup, we are considering it as the 100%. I don't know how many grams equals the 35% that it's being asked in the problem. Doing these calculations, we got that it is 248.5 grams. Another way to express concentration is in parts per million. Just as percent means out of a hundred, so parts per million means out of a million. The same, uh, the same explanation. Parts of solute present, but now in one million parts of the solution. It means that the base is 1,000, one, I'm sorry, 1 million parts. As you can imagine, it is uh, used for dilute solutions. They have very small quantity of the solute. And doing the, the, the same example, if there are five parts of the solute. In this case, now you will find 999,995 parts of the solvent. Because if you sum five parts of the solute with this amount of parts of the solvent, you will get one million. And now, the way to express it is as ppm, parts per million. So five parts, it's translated to five ppm, and the other parts of the solvent as ppm two. But remember that now the solution, which is the total, contains one million parts. Let's do this exercise together. A jar containing 20 liters of water has 0.2 milliliters of chlorine. As you know, chlorine is added to drinking water as disinfectant. And the question is if it is safe to drink. Now we can read that the regulation mark, I'm sorry, that the regulation mark seven parts per million as maximum. Let's analyze the problem. Now our solution are this jar with 20 milliliters of water. They have 0.2 milliliters of chlorine. First of all, as you can see, we have different units. We have liters and milliliters. Both are volume units, but we need to have the same. So you can choose to transform liters into milliliters and have both volumes as milliliters or the other way, transform these milliliters into liters. I will do it with milliliters. If I know that one liter contains 1000 milliliters, then 20 liters, I don't know how many milliliters, and it corresponds to 
20,000 milliliters. This is the first conversion. Now, as I know that these 20 liters are the solution, I will write my number cross proportion. 20,000 milliliters correspond to one, now it is one million parts per million. One million parts per million. You need to add six zeros to that quantity. 0 0.2 milliliters. I don't know how many parts per million. Do the calculation. You need to multiply 0.2, the cross numbers, which is 0.2 times 1 million, and then divide it into this one. And you will get 10 parts per million. That is the concentration of chlorine. The question, is it safe to drink? And the answer, it's not, because seven parts per million, it's the maximum.